Hi there guys, welcome to this PowerPoint tutorial. Um, this time we're going to look at PowerPoint presentations and this time uh, how to create a PowerPoint quiz. And then taking this quiz, making it in PowerPoint and putting it online. So that's what we're going to do here. This is computer tutoring. Let's go to the splash screen thingy, shall we? Now, uh, just first thing you need to know before you um, embark on this endeavor is you'll need to have Office 365 really to take full advantage of this and preferably PowerPoint 2019. Yeah, it's exciting stuff here. So I've got my PowerPoint presentation. Now this is a quiz that I did last week just to alleviate the boredom of the lockdown. So it was like animals that were real or fake. Uh, if you haven't already done so, then please subscribe. Next time, we're going to have a look at other technologies in the 365 suite that you can bring into PowerPoint to collate your, your, your quiz results. So let's have a look at this screen here. Let's see what we're going you know, we're going to do so we can actually see that. So uh, if you haven't already seen this one here, so you can see it on the screen. So for instance, it says, what type of breed of dog is this? So this is a chow chow. So you can have a quick look. So this is a chow chow there. Um, so the idea is this, is we can actually put in different types of answers. And then the idea is we want to have our users, the people that are experienced in this presentation or this quiz, this online PowerPoint quiz, to be able to interact, that they can choose the answers. Now there are some limitations online. So what, the way I'm gonna go through this is gonna help you so that you'll be able to do an online presentation. I do make a few mistakes with this as well. So just bear with us. But you can see the problems that I've got. Uh, obviously, there's more development needed in this product here. OK, so we've seen this presentation. What type of breed of dog is it, this is? Let's insert some text boxes, shall we? Uh, in fact, some buttons or shapes. So we've got the insert button here at the top. We're going to go to shapes just here. And then we can just uh, insert our rounded rectangle. And I can draw a rectangle here and type the name of the dog. You already guessed that one. It's a chow chow. There we go. So there we go. So we've got chow chow just here. Uh, I can then hold down the control key on the keyboard. So hold down the control key and then I can drag copies of that. Um, so let's just click and drag so I can do different copies. That's good. It should be easy enough to line up. There we go. That's good. I'm going to spend time lining up and then I can put other dogs in here as well. So if I just uh, try others. So it's a great Dane. Oops. Um, I can just say that that was his, uh, a terrier. Uh, here, uh, or it's, uh, was it Newfoundland or Dalmatian? Here we go. There we go. No, it's obviously not one of those. So the idea is we want to choose the right um, answer. So let's see if we can do that. So the idea is, is we'll have the right answer appear as a nice button at the top. So if I go to shapes and I choose the rounded rectangle there, and I'm going to draw a nice rectangle and type the word correct in. Woohoo! So now we're going to change the color. So basically up on the uh, shape format here, there's a shape styles section just here and I can change the shape fill and then the outline and all of that here. So let's do that. So I'm going to choose no fill, oh, not no fill. <laughs> I'm going to choose green fill here. And then for the outline, I'm going to choose no outline. And, and I'm just going to make the text bigger, go back to home. I like these little buttons here. They're just so low, I like little buttons here. You can click on them and make the text bigger. So let's just give that one a go. So let's we go and that's lovely uh, so that's the correct one so the idea of this is is when I click on chow chow which is the correct answer that appears so just to prove the point if nothing up my sleeve type Paul Daniels method I'm running the presentation as you can see here it comes up correct oops rather if I if I don't do anything like that it just says correct so I want that to appear so if I went to correct and did like most people would go to animations just at the top here and then click on appear or let's say fade that'll do so when I run my presentation, nice little tip, shift and F5. So if I hold down the shift key and F5, it just runs the presentation from that point in time. So now if I click once on the mouse, like so, you can see correct appears there. That is fantastic. But the problem is, is, oh, let me just run the presentation again. When I click anywhere, a correct appears. Now I want the correct to appear when I'm clicking on chow chow. So how do I do that? So what I do is I'm going to click on correct just here. And then under the animations section here, you'll notice there's a nice little section that's called trigger. So I'm going to click on this trigger section just here on click off. And then I can choose my rectangles. Get the idea of how much I've been mucking around with this. It's up to rectangle rounded corners 33. Well, I would go choose that one there. 
Um, and that would work basically just to shift F5 to uh, run that one. If I then click anywhere, it just moves to the next slide. But if I go back and click on Chow Chow specifically, you can see it comes up correct. Looking good. All righty then. So um, just one problem here though. I don't know if you notice when I click on correct and go to trigger and in here, if you look at the names of these, they're not very catchy, are they? It's like rounded corners 33. Absolutely crazy. Um, 34, 30, I mean, it's just really weird. So all these rounded corners type malarkey, I want to give them decent names. So how do I do that? Let's go and click on shape format at the top. So make sure you've got the shape selected here. Oops, done my arrow the wrong way around. Let's just uh, get rid of that one. Make sure the shape selected. And then we're going to click on shape format just at the top here. And then we're going to go and click on the selection pane, the selection pane. All right then, so let's go to selection pane just here. We can see all of our selection there on the right hand side. Uh, all of those names that don't really, all those rounded corners and weird numbers afterwards. Let's give it a name. And I know which one I've selected here because it's in pink. So that's the right one. So I'm going to call that correct. Okay, um, just here, double click, control A to select all, correct. I want to name this one as well as the right answer or chow chow. That's good. Help me remember the name. So I'm just going to double click, control A to select all, type in chow chow. So I know that's one's there. That's great. And then if I wanted to, I can go with these buttons just here. So that's the Great Dane, uh, like so. And I'll make this exercise available. Of course I will at, at the bottom so you can have a muck around with it. I don't know what, in, what state it will be in, but We'll give it a go, shall we? Dalmatian, that's good. And we got a terrier there, that's brilliant. Okie dokie, hope you know what dog it is. I'm not that great with dogs. Okay, terrier. Excellent, so the idea is that's the correct one. Um, so we need one for wrong. So let me just hide that um, selection pane. So I'm gonna go to correct here. I'm gonna copy and paste it. And then I'm going to call this one wrong and I'm just going to change the background color and you know that type of thing. So absolutely great. The only thing I need to do is obviously when I'm clicking on a wrong choice, so if I click on Great Dane, yeah, that's not a Great Dane, yeah, it's a chow chow, it's a great, you know, not a Great Dane, so we're going to put the wrong answer in here. So uh, let us go to wrong, back up to animations, go into triggers that we can do here and then we can say on click off, and again, I know Great Dane, so I can say Great Dane here. So now when I run this, that's the button at the bottom as well, you can also use Shift F5, you know. Okay, if I click on Chow Chow, great, that's correct. If I go back, oops, and then if I go click, click on Great Dane, that's wrong. I'm just using the arrow keys to go back and forward again. Problem is though, if I click on Dalmatian, you know, or if I click on um, Terrier, they are also wrong answers, but it's not coming up wrong. It's only coming up with Great Dane. <gasps> So what do I do? Easily, all I need to do is to, let's come out of that, group. So Great Dane, so if I click Great Dane, hold down the Shift key on your keyboard, yeah? And then if you click on Terrier, and then Dalmatian, just here, and then we're gonna group it. So you can do Control G, hold down Control and press G on your keyboard, if you wanna do that. If you're not such uh, a keyboard fan, then you can then go to your shape format just here at the top, just here. And then there's a little group option there, which will allow us to group them together, which is great. And then so that we're absolutely clear, I mean, it's pretty obvious all those are wrong answers, but just so that we're absolutely clear, we can go to our selection pane. Do you remember that little old selection pane just up here? There we go. So we click on the selection pane. There's group 39, not the catchiest of names, I must admit. So I'm just going to go up, double click, control A to select all, and I'll type these wrong answers. That's great. So now when I click on wrong just over here, when I go to my animations up here to start adding the triggers in, oops, bit big, but you get the idea. Um, and then if I go to my triggers just here on the click of, and it's gonna choose wrong answers. Great, that is, it's, it's just coming together so well, it just wanted to make me cry. Um, so let's have a look here. So now if I click on Chow Chow, that comes up with the correct answer. I just click on the back arrow and then the, uh, the left arrow and the right arrow. But now if I click on Dalmatian, it is wrong, okay? If I go and click on Great Dane, it is wrong. You get the idea, yeah. Uh, beauty of it is, is that there's no fill you know, the buttons look, you know, it looked like they're separate buttons, which is pretty cool, you know. 
Now, there's other problems with this as well. I think you would agree. So for instance, um, you click wrong and you keep clicking wrong. And then when you click right, it comes up at the bottom. Well, it's actually underneath it. You can't see it, but it is underneath it there. If I go back and forward, if I click on chow chow, that's great. And I click on wrong and then I click on right. You see what I mean? It just makes a real mess. So the idea is we want to block off those um you know those buttons there so we can uh, block them off fortunately when you put them online there can be issues there so i'll just very quickly show you um how you might want to do that one uh so say for instance uh you would just draw a rectangle so insert a shape let's just do a rounded corner rectangle or just a normal rectangle here i could draw across like so what i tend to do is change the shape fill you know to white uh, maybe get rid of the shape outline to no outline here. But under the shape fill, what's interesting, when you go to no fill, uh, not no, no fill, I don't want to go to no fill. So when you go to fill colors or more fill colors, at the bottom just here, when I zoom in, you can adjust the transparency. So if I click on that drop down list and I can drag in that transparency, I can make that 70%. So you can see that's automatically um, yeah, filtered out. That's great. So the idea of, um, yeah, so it looks like it's blocking those off, which is great. I make sure it's at the front. So I bring it forward. So there's stacking order here to so make sure that's at the front. And then what I need to do is just add an anima animation to it. So I'm going to animate fade in. So that fades in here. And then with the animation pane on the right hand side. So if you haven't done that, make sure or don't know where that is. Make sure you're on animations here and click on animation pane to appear that, make that appear on the right hand side there. You can see my rectangle there. So I'm just going to drag that under chow chow for that right entry. And then going to dip, click on the drop down list and choose start after previous which is great. I need to do another one. Fortunately, I can't seem to have two animations on the same one. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Uh, so there's another one just there. And then I just drag that underneath here. It automatically has the same trigger or when it's going to actually start, which is going to be after uh, the other. That's great. Brilliant. So the idea of this is let's give it a test. So I click on that. And now when I click on Great Dane, it goes wrong. That comes in. I can make it fully invisible if I want to, but it allows me doesn't allow me to go back and make another choice. You know, I have to continue uh, as well. So far, so good. All looking hunky dory. So there's just a couple of things as well. Um, now, uh, if you want to put this online, there's a couple of ways of doing this. On the basic level within PowerPoint, it's not great. Some of the buttons don't work well. Um, so just give you an example. What you would do uh, normally online is you would just save this. So I've saved this. I go to File, and I would go to Save As, and then I would save it on my OneDrive account. So make sure you save it on your OneDrive or your SharePoint or somewhere where you've got you know, shared access. Okay. So uh, let's open this online. So I've got this one here. So I'm going to open this one online here. Uh, and then this is the version that's online. The beauty of this is, is you save it on the OneDrive, you click on your OneDrive account and you just open it up. It's great. Um, yeah. I mean, there's options just at the bottom here where you can go right click and there's options to view online as well. If you want to see OneDrive account, there's a view online button and it will open up your online button. I'll just close that down. I don't want to see all of you to see all my personal details. Right, so I'm online here. That's great. There's the presentation. I'm going to click on the button to start it. Fortunately, they do have to click on a button to start the presentation online. You can't create a, what's known as a PowerPoint show, which means it won't immediately launch into your presentation. Maybe there's a better way of doing that, but uh, something for Microsoft to work on. So now we go for the love of animals. That's fine. I can click on Great Dane or whatever, and it comes up wrong, and that's great. The box here pops pops up here. Unfortunately, when I click on Great Dane, it comes up wrong. I've got to have to click off of it to go to the next slide, which is a bit of downside of, of that as well. The other downside as well is um, going to next slides or doing triggers seem to work, but when I try to do things like going to last slide view or things that are really um, just for the desktop version of PowerPoint, things just seem to, uh, I don't know, um, fall to bits basically. Give you an idea. Uh, I'm just going to go back to my desktop version of PowerPoint just here. Um, okay, so this is, um, is this, is this owl real or is this owl fake? You know, is it like a dog owl or whatever? It looks kind of a weird type of thing with little claws at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is give people the option. So let's draw those shapes. So if I go to my rounded rectangle, draw that one here, type in a real, let's make the text a little bigger. You can pause this as well. You don't have to make it look as pretty, you know, as I'm doing here. Just going to drag a copy down here and then just drag in a, and I'll type in fake. Okay. So the idea is I've already prepared on the file just down here, one that says wrong. 
yeah? Um, and there's a button at the bottom, I'll show you where, let me get rid of that button, I'll show you how I created that. So if I scroll up here and go to my owl, so the idea is this is fake. So if it's, so somebody chooses real and think, hey look, that's real, it's wrong, yeah? So what they can do is they can right click on this real one here, not a problem, they can go down to link just here, and then you've got an option here to go to a particular slide. So I've got slide 11 here where it's got the wrong, so I can click on OK, and that's great, and so that's the wrong one just there. And then what I can do is on the Insert tab, go to Shapes, and insert an action button. Now look very carefully at the button. There's one that looks like Return. Uh, this is the standard, oh, got rid of it. So that's the standard button there, so that Return one just here. So if I do that, what that's doing is automatically adding in a, a, a button with an action on it, and that action is going to go back to the last slide viewed. Okay, so when I click on OK, the idea is if say I'm testing this one out, I'm on this owl here. Remember the shortcut key to um, uh, view from current slide? That's Shift and F5. And I think, yeah, I think that is real. So I click on real and it takes me to wrong and it's got a little message about wrong there. And then I can click on this button here and it takes me back to that previous slide. Great for the desktop version of PowerPoint. Let's say I see how it works on the online version of PowerPoint. So just make sure it's saved and I can see it's saved just at the top. It's just telling me, oops, wrong. Um, there you go, I can see it's saved up here at the top. So now what I'll do is I'll swap to the online version of PowerPoint. Uh, it's beauty of this, I just saved it and updated it. And you can see I've got wrong here and I've got now this, uh, uh, this owl doggy type thing here. I can just test this out from that slide. So now I can click on real and it creates sort of like a hyperlink. So it is gonna go to wrong, but this button here is not going to work, I'm afraid. If I click on it, it's ending the slideshow because it's the last slide in the slideshow, so it's not working. So um, yeah, that's, you know, it's not great. I mean, I suppose um, another way people might be shouting and saying, well, hello, Simon, can't you just present this online? So um, if I go to say, for instance, uh, back to our desktop version, uh, there we go. Can't I go to slideshow at the top? So if you do the same, slideshow. Uh, so if I click on slideshow, and then if I go to present online, just this little section just here, yeah. Uh, and then I can go to office presentation service. Needless to say, you need to have Office 365, and I'm using 2019 version. So if don't, don't, be, don't be commenting down there if you're thinking, how do you do this in Excel 2007? You can't, okay? Um, yeah, I can't remember how much I pay for this a month, but it's a monthly subscription, you know, for this. Great, anyway, so if I um, go up here, just make sure you tick this because there are limited options online. So some of your, you know, people going through the presentation, if they want to experience that, will have to download that. So when I click on that to download that, click on connect, and what it's gonna do is gonna put it up line to the Office Online Presentation or PowerPoint Presentation Service. Um, and then it's gonna give you a hyperlink. So let's have a look at the hyperlink that it's given us and we can copy, there it is. So I'm just gonna click on this copy link button just here and uh, that's going to copy the link I'm just going to open it up in a browser just on the other screen just here and then I'll drag it across so you can see uh, there we go and so this is what users will see they're sitting there <gasps> waiting for you to start your presentation there we go waiting for your presentation to begin so um, let's go and let's start it shall we so if I go back to my desktop version there we go and then there's a little button here that says start a presentation so let's start the presentation just here. And let's, there we go, the presentation's ready to go. If I swap back to the online version just here, this is what the users are seeing. This is what they're seeing here. Um, so yeah, it's great. So as you go through the presentation, so if I set or click to go to the next slide, then if I swap back, they're seeing exactly the same thing, yeah? The only downside is, is if I click, you see, I can't interact with them, the buttons. I can't choose the right or the wrong choices. I could probably tell, you know, if I'm using Zoom or Skype or whatever, I could tell the, the presenter, uh, okay, go for chow chow. And you click, and the presenter will then click on chow chow and that will come up correct, you know, with their little gray out thing as well. Um, yeah, but uh, that doesn't, yeah, doesn't work. Yeah, so what they'd have to do is click on this download button here at the top. Yeah, and then they would download it and muck around with it as well. Uh, that's great. Brilliant, okay, so yeah, so that's the other one, uh, the way you can do it. I mean, if you're online as well, I mean, they can go to other slides at least, you know, go ahead and see what's there 
uh, which is quite good. You can have shared meeting notes. I can click on follow presenter to go back to the presenter as well. Um, so there is some sort of interaction, I suppose, but not great. You would have to click on that download link. That's what I would do. And then they would download if they wanted to go through that file in their own and maybe, you know, just hopefully they're not looking ahead, you know. Um, most people like to have a nice quiz. Great. So there we have it. So mentioned before, next time we're going to have a look at trying to integrate other technology within um, PowerPoint. It's really cool. We, you can get um, uh, interactions as well. Um, and so you could do that um, with PowerPoint and you can export it to a video. And then in the video, you can actually have interaction as well. Not only that, on a future series, what we will do is show how to collate that information into an Excel spreadsheet and then maybe do a chart or two on that as well, just as a little bonus. So if you haven't already done so and you don't want to miss out on that, make sure you click on that subscribe button. Make sure you click on that notifications button so you don't miss a thing. So take care, be careful out there and thank you so much for watching. See you later.